Hi, my name is Benedict Tools. Welcome to the sports segment here on AM Show. It's a Tuesday morning straight that we will go into the stories here on the local scene. Well, over the weekend, matches were played uh, in the Ghana Premier League, match the seven. Well, one of the games uh, played over the weekend was at the Dewu Park, where Kumasi Asante Kotoko went away to play against Dreams FC. Dreams won that game by a goal to null, and a lot of people were there to see the game. Kumasi Asante Kotoko fans, as well as fans of Dreams FC. One of those people that went to watch the game was Kabne Abua, Sports Writers Association of Ghana president. Well, he spoke about how exodus of players is affecting the quality of the Ghana Premier League, and he cited that uh, most is done because of the poor wages given our players here. This country uh, confronts a serious problem and that phenomenon has to do with all third world countries which is the fact that there is massive exodus of our players. You have a situation where players are drifting not only to European shores but they are going to other West African countries because again we can debate the subject, it's a bigger picture and that bigger picture is that our players are paid slave wages. You cannot pay a player 100 cities, 300 cities and expect that you're going to have quality strikers. You are in a dreamland. Let's confront the situation. You cannot pay these wages and expect. Why do you think that a team Horoya from Guinea would come all the way to Ghana to try and price away one of our top strikers with $40,000? So it's a bigger picture. It's not a question of just complaining about the fact that we do not have quality strikers. We have to get to the fundamentals. And the fundamental is that you're not paying well. Almost every single month, every single two months, your players are leaving. And it, it, it's an issue that we have to address. All right, so that was Sports Writers Association of Ghana, uh, President Kwame was speaking there. Well, we still have to stay with the Ghana Premier League. And following the uh, uh, recent defeats in the league, uh, they've uh, lost three games in their seven games they've played so far. Quite hard to focus. Some of the fans are calling for the exit of their coach, that's Henry Wellington. Well, yesterday, the club released a statement that their coach will not be available for their game against Kerala United, which will be played uh, tomorrow. That's a midweek game in the Ghana Premier League. Well, the reason being that the coach is not well and then uh, will not be available. So uh, Edward Odum, who is the assistant coach, will take charge of the team uh, when they go and face Kerala United at Indianase. But we have to talk about coaches. And, you know, a former player of the club, like Kingston, has also been watching uh, the club in this season's Premier League. And for him, uh, the club is not doing quite well and has expressed the desire to return uh, to the club as a coach one day. Um, I'm ever ready to, 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 to honor that invitation. And I'm looking forward to it. You see, because out of focus in my blood, it's in my blood. Even though I'm a coach, I can coach any other team in the, in the country. As a player, a, a football player will score in Manchester and then kiss the badge. Move to where? Real Madrid, score and kiss the badge. The moment where you are, you give another 10%. That's me. That's me. I have passion for this job, so I'm in for it. All right, so former Accra Hartful uh, player, uh, that's a lie against. I nearly said former Accra Hartful coach, but now he says he wants to coach the club. We'll see if uh, one day the club uh, will give him that call uh, for him to be their coach. But we have to stay here and do some more. And now we talk the English Premier League. Well, you know that Manchester City are champions of the English Premier League. Over the weekend, they defeated Tottenham Hotspur by three goals to one. That game was on Saturday specifically. And then needed Manchester United to drop points, three points, in their game against West Bromwich Albion. And United did so. Uh, they lost that game by a goal to Nolan. By virtue of that, City opened a 16-point lead with five matches to spare. And if you look at that point and the number of points, if Manchester United should win their next five games still, City will be winning the Premier League. So by virtue of that, they uh, were declared champions over the weekend. Well, they've been reveling in their title success. And uh, here, for us, uh, we've done a road to their title success for you. Come on, boys, eh? Big season, big game, come on! From the very first day of the season, Manchester City knew they had something special ahead of them. A win on the south coast at Brighton got their campaign off to the perfect start. Within the next two months, they'd put at least five goals past Liverpool, Watford and Crystal Palace. Arguably the first significant victory, though, came during their trip to London to face champions Chelsea in late September. That's why you're so happy, because it's not easy. It's not easy to come here in the Stamford Bridge and to play how we play, because we beat the last championship. October brought another flawless month in the league for Pep Guardiola as his side registered three more victories. Late November became a period where City made a habit of waiting until the dying minutes to win games. It's Raheem Sterling! That wins titles! 
Despite these late heroics from Sterling, it was perhaps the victory over Manchester United just a couple of weeks later, which was City's biggest statement. And it's hooked home by Otamendi! After opening the gap at the top of the table, already people began to ask if the title was wrapped up. Impossible. So of course you have 11 points, we are so happy for that, plus the goal difference, so it's 12 points difference, so, but it's not yet. Just before the turn of the year, City showed first signs of possible chinks in their armour as they were held to a goalless draw at Crystal Palace, ending an incredible 18-match winning run. It was only two weeks later that Guardiola's team could no longer be labelled the Invincibles, as Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool produced a stunning display at Anfield to end City's hopes of going the season unbeaten. Manchester City lose. That might be your headline. You have to leave this kind of situation during the season. Um, and we are going to try to, to be as short as possible. City didn't dwell on the defeat, though, and they soon continued to produce the mesmeric football that had been sweeping aside opponents all season. By mid-March, they were edging closer to the title, and following an important victory at Stoke City, they were left with the dream scenario. Two more wins, and you'll win the title against Manchester United. Fancy that? <laughs> I think everybody in the blue side of Manchester know it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but uh, you know, steady. Um, we've got two more. Uh, well, we've got one more game before before United, which will be difficult, and and then we'll see. You know, I'm sure it's not going to be handed to us. City's neighbours had other ideas, though. United completed an incredible comeback to win 3-2 at the Etihad, putting on hold a blue takeover in Manchester. United rule the city, so City for now do not yet rule the land. A little bit sad, of course, for our fans, for our people, for our players. Despite being made to wait, they didn't have to wait for long. An emphatic display at Wembley against Tottenham put the title within their grasp. And when Manchester United surprisingly failed to get a result against West Brom at Old Trafford, it meant that Manchester City, without being on the pitch themselves, were confirmed as Premier League champions. All right, so Premier League champions uh, for the season 2017-18 season, Manchester City, you saw how they did it this year. Some scintillating, amazing football they played under Pep Guardiola. We'll see if they can repeat same going into the league next season. But remember, we still have some more matches to end the English Premier League. Now, we have to move on and do boxing. And so, uh, Amir Khan uh, is saying that he fought so Canelo Alvarez two years ago out of desperation. Reason... I took the Canelo fight is because I got quite desperate. I really wanted a big super fight, and I wanted to be. Um, I wanted my name lit up on in, on on the Vegas Strip. It's always been my dream, and the Mayweather fight got so close many times, but just never seemed to happen. So was it a bit of a knee-jerk reaction? Do you think? Yeah, I think it was just a reaction for me to say yes, just give me that fight. Even though knowing that I was giving a lot of weight away, knowing that I'm fighting a bigger, stronger guy. I, I still said, look, fine, I want that fight. And, and then breaking the fight down, I started believing that I could beat Canelo. And I was quicker than him. I might not be stronger than him, but I'd stay away from him and I had better footwork than him. I can make history if I do this. So I started believing big, I started believing in myself. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't work that way. Well, Can hasn't fought since being knocked out by Canelo in 2016. But he returns to the ring this Saturday. He's going to take on the dangerous Phil LaGreco. And it's live on Sky Sports. And he's recently signed a, a three-fight deal with Matchroom. He is determined to cement his legacy. I'm a lot stronger than I've ever been before. Uh, a lot's happened in my life. Um, and looking in my boxing career now, I know that these next few moves I'm going to make in my career are the biggest moves. It's done a big deal with Eddie Hearn. Um, and it's all about my boxing career, where I want to leave my legacy. And this was all about, now it's all about me finishing, finishing off in this boxing career on a, on a high. And that's what I want to do. I want to win another, I want to win another world title. Um, I want a few more big fights and walk away from the sport happy. All right, so on that note, we end sports this morning here on the AM Show. Thanks so much for your company. We are back tomorrow, same time, with another exciting edition of the program. Until then, make your way to the Major Online Sports page and read more sports stories for yourself. My name is Benedict Tosu. Join us, um, follow us on our various social media platforms. Joy Sports GH, both on Facebook and on Twitter. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of the program.